Welcome to MyPAR. This will be a brief introduction to MyPAR's layout and some of the capabilities that you can expect to find in each of the five applications. Here's what you'll see when you first launch MyPAR. You have your launch bar up top that gives you access to the five applications at all times. You have your global status bar down below that will print out progress bars, uh, messages, pieces of instruction. So if you ever ever stuck or confused, take a look down here. There might be some instructions printed out that could help you. Let's launch the image processor. This is where most users, I think, will spend a good amount of their time constructing recipes, processing single images, and so on. You have your menu bar up top that gives you access to many features. A lot of these will be covered in the future tutorials and the ones uh, already present on the website. Here's your shortcut bar. This gives you access to commonly used actions like opening an image, loading a recipe, saving an image, saving a recipe, making manual edits, setting layers. We'll talk about those in one of the other tutorials. This shortcut helps you generate feature by feature measurements. Uh, if you want to generate global measurements such as area fraction, uh, mean intercept, number of features, perimeter, those are available here. Clicking feature by feature measurements will give you the same interface as clicking measurements in the shortcut bar will. Here we have our image toolbar that gives us different interactive tools like measuring distance, measuring angle, taking a line profile, measuring parameters of features, identifying the feature ID number, zooming and panning. This is the calibration panel that will allow you to set the scale of your image, the pixels per micron, also known as calibrating the magnification. MyPAR is uh, exclusively in units of microns at the moment. It was developed that way uh, as a microstructural analysis tool, um, and it's been very convenient for us to always work in units of microns, but we are uh, working on expanding support for other units, especially if there's a lot of feedback, if that is something people would find helpful. So for now, you may need to occasionally convert between nanometers and microns, or perhaps centimeters and microns, or millimeters and microns, uh, so just keep that in mind. Here we have our panel where various image properties are shown. Uh, again, we'll get into this a bit more later. And here's your integrated help box for the image processor. These help boxes are present in the three heavily interactive applications of MyPAR, the image processor, the processed image editor, and the 3D toolbox. Right-clicking on any user interface element will flash a border around it and indicate a bit of help text as to what it does and what it's used for. Now with MyPAR being very early in the beta development stage, there will be a number of elements that when you right click on them, they'll say no help available. And that is something that will be filling out as MyPAR continues to develop. Reference image, uh, current image, recipe panel, these will all be much clearer once we get into the other tutorials and you begin to use MyPAR. So I think that's about it for the image processor. Let's take a quick look at the batch processor. Um, again, a uh, small menu bar up top, common features throughout all applications. Here's where you'll load in a recipe if you intend to apply it to a number of images, select the images to process, choose where to save them, and a lot of these other options are relevant to uh, making a 3D reconstruction and will be covered in that tutorial. And then the progress report as the batch is running appears down here. The real-time processor is the app that we have used the least uh, and likely uh, will be uh, seldomly if ever used by most of our users but it's here uh, really for its potential. We developed it alongside the batch processor as sort of a cousin to it where all of the most of the functionality between the two apps um, is identical. The primary difference is the batch processor will process images post acquisition from say a folder or a multi-selected set of image files where the real-time processor monitors a folder say on a data server so uh, as new images are added to the folder it sees that new image as it's added 
and begins processing it according to the steps that you've set up. So it could potentially be processing in real time images as they come off of a microscope. So we have done most of our processing uh, post acquisition offline, so to speak, but we're very interested in what our users can uh, come up with as applications for the real time processor. I should mention though that there's probably a significant number of bugs in the real time processor being that it's uh, the least used application from our end. So feel free to file those bug reports. The processed image editor, we'll take a quick look at that. Again, shortcut bar, common actions, menu bar. Here's where your processed images get loaded in. Your original images, they're shown to you overlaid or in other modes over here. Making manual edits, generating measurements global or feature by feature, calibrating your magnification, and again your integrated help box. So here are examples where the help text has not been populated for elements. Um, you'll find this most commonly in the processed image editor in 3D toolbox, but as I mentioned, they'll be filling in quite quickly. The 3D toolbox may be never used by some of our users if they're only interested in 2D processing. So I'll just quickly go over this. Your image stack uh, will be viewed and manipulated here on the left. Your reconstruction on the right. The image stack for a typical serial section data set, say collected in the dual beam FID, um, will look in the unprocessed state pretty identical to the reconstruction since your sequence of images, which is all the image stack is, looks like the reconstructed uh, volume when you slice through it one XY slice at a time in your reconstruct uh, reconstruction. Your reconstruction is, is actually a volume of data, so it's made up of 3D pixels or voxels, where an image stack is just a sequence of frames. Oftentimes it's helpful when making a reconstruction to split up the workflow into the alignment step and everything else where you'll run the raw images through the batch processor and align them and just make an image stack out of the result. Open up the image stack in the 3D toolbox, view the alignment, maybe redo it if it needs adjustment, maybe crop an area of interest out of the image stack and then export uh, those aligned images to make your segmentation recipe to then run through the rest of the steps for the 3D reconstruction. And again, the details of all of that will be covered in later tutorials. Um, right now, MyPAR does not support the reconstruction of a volume from a tilt series. We use other software to do the reconstruction and then uh, load in the reconstructed volume into MyPAR for the processing and quantification. But in the future, my PAR will support, in the near future, my PAR will support reconstructing a volume from a tilt series. In that case, the image stack would be much different from the reconstruction, and that the image stack would be your tilt series, and the reconstruction would be, say, the product of your back projection, your actual reconstructed volume from that tilt series. So that would allow you to work uh, on the tilt series, both pre and post reconstruction. So that, I think, about does it for the quick overview of the 3D Toolbox. I know nothing has really been shown. We're just quickly going through an overview of the layout and, and uh, some of the capabilities. Uh, but if, if you're interested in working in the 3D Toolbox, if you're going to be using MyPAR for 3D analysis, then please feel free to um, check out the uh, 3D Toolbox tutorials as they become available. Uh, or contact me over the various support options if you need assistance that are available on the MyPAR website. Uh, and that is the end of this brief introduction to MyPAR. Thanks very much for being a MyPAR user and for watching this tutorial. Um, I encourage you to view the remaining tutorials on actually using MyPAR. Uh, and thanks again very much for your attention.